Today on Locked On Rockies, the Rockies are playing close games. They are still playing under 500 ball. Is that enough? Does that build on what we talked about yesterday? Does that mean momentum is shaping up for the future? We'll see. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 10th day of August in the year 2023. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot. That's what we do around here. Let's talk Rockies baseball for you here on the favorite streaming service of yours, the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel and Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. You can find all your Colorado Rockies play-by-play action and Locked on Rockies action on Sirius XM. Just search Locked on Rockies or Colorado Rockies and you'll be taken to where you need to go. Today's episode of Locked on Rockies is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're going to take a look at Rocks Piles, three Rockies to watch here in the Los Angeles Dodgers series that's coming up here. A very fun, as always, four game series against the Los Angeles Dodgers. We'll also take a look at uh, the injury updates for Chris Bryant and Charlie Blackman. And I really liked this Thomas Harding piece on the recap of yesterday's game because I think it builds off of what we were talking about yesterday, how we were talking about the response and the emotional stability of Tovar and some of these players and how it signals a, a, a could signal a positive trend for the future here. So let's head over here to Rockies want to finish strong after another close loss. This is from Thomas Harding, and this is on MLB.com. Um, and... Uh, I wanted to zoom up to this part here. Since July 4th, the increasingly youthful Rockies are 11 and 16, an improvement over the pace that has left them with a 45 and 69 record. In this stretch of competitive ball, 12 of the 16 losses and seven of the 11 victories have been by three or fewer runs. Over the season, the Rockies are 18 and 14 in one run ball games. As has become customary, four of the starting position players Wednesday were rookies. Everyone here wants that experience, Tovar said. Everyone wants to grow and continue to play. It's part of it. That's the beauty of this game. We get better as time goes, and we're happy to be part of that. There's a reason for all those clo- all the close games. We aren't scoring enough runs to give us any room to breathe, manager Bud Black said. Jerks and Profar's fourth inning leadoff homer began a four-run Rockies frame. However, starting pitcher Chris, Chris Flexen gave up three runs in a fourth inning that included Tyron Taylor's two-run double and yielded consecutive homers to Willie Adamas and Andrew Monsenterio to lose to the lead, to lose the lead. Profar tied it with an infield hit in the seventh. Uh, so it's it, as much as those games, as as much as stuff is frustrating in in games like that. When you're building for the future and when you're looking at the future for the Rockies, you should have more hope in this pitching staff going forward. You're not necessarily are you going to be immediately back to for sure confidence. We know the we 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 know the weaknesses of the members of this rotation and uh but the biggest glaring factor I think and missing piece that we that we're going to miss from good analysis of the Rockies overall and their trajectory is the lack of starting pitching depth and starting pitchers that are going to be in the rotation as this team works its way back towards uh, competitiveness. Could the Rockies be in better spots if they had Herman Marquez and Antonio Senzatella and uh, et cetera, et cetera, going on? I mean, you can keep going down the list of pitchers the Rockies have used in certain instances this year, but Herman and Senza being the main ones in, in this situation. You, you that those pitchers put the Rockies in better positions to win than Chris Flexen, Connor Siebold, Chase Anderson, some of the other ones that the Rockies have had to turn to in this season. So when we're seeing the Rockies get in and fight and play these close ball games, and there's a myriad of issues, but kind of one of the X factors being 
when this sluggish Rockies offense performs, the starting pitching doesn't necessarily air, and vice versa. Starting pitching is good, and the offense is non-existent. Look at Kyle Freeland, a good chunk of Kyle Freeland's games this year, Austin Gomber as well, uh, having some of the lowest run support in all of baseball. So when we're kind of thinking, is it enough that the Rockies are playing these games? Does it really matter? What are we breaking down? How can this apply to the future? We're missing that key component of the Rockies not having the rotation that they have signed to terms outside of Herman Marquez, of course, at this point, but some of the pitchers of, 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 of long-term deals or are in the middle of extensions that they have signed with the Rockies. Of course, the Austin Gomber deal coming, bringing him over and then using that fifth spot in the rotation to, to keep to, uh, tweaking and using some of the young guys that you have. The argument would be, I think the Rockies would be better. I think the Rockies would have more wins in those close ball games and would be a better team if they had their starting rotation. But it doesn't, but I don't think you, you can't lean solely on that in this analysis. You can't lean solely on, well, the shortcomings of the team and the team uh, still playing below 500 ball is mostly, mostly just because they don't have their starters. I don't necessarily think that you can say in this season, having Sens and Herman Marquez, that this team completely bounces back. They've gotten, they in situations where their starters have had success, this team hasn't scored, but it's also a mixed with the most of the first part of the season and I'm heading up to the trade deadline. The Rockies weren't skewing younger. So I think the biggest takeaway when we're looking at analysis, when we're looking ahead and, and we're looking at these close ball games and what it means for the Rockies doesn't mean anything in 2023, doesn't mean anything for the record books this year, but it means that the Rockies are playing good teams with their young core effectively and not at their best abilities and not fully backed up by the starting pitching that the Rockies believe that they have in the system and within the organization. So when I'm looking at these things, I continue to look at the second half as a positive, even though the Rockies are losing and even though the Rockies are dropping some frustrating games. What's really frustrating, especially about this second half, is the fact that more than more often than not, you can more look at ah, the Rockies just missed an opportunity. Rockies just needed to bounce back there. Rockies just needed to do you know a couple of things. Instead of times in the first half and through points of the season where the Rockies just looked outmatched in every level. It's encouraging to see while the Rockies young guys are still going through the struggles, high strikeouts, low offense numbers in general for the Rockies, et cetera, et cetera. But you're seeing positive trends and you're seeing them take on an, a very difficult strength of schedule with their heads focused on getting better. Tovar being able to handle taking one off the chin like he did with his mistakes and immediately bounce back with, with being prepared to handle the off the field, the media, the questions and everything while reiterating the fact that going through this and doing this stuff is important just continues to build that trust. As much losing as the Rockies will probably do the rest of this year, as long as it's in games where they feel like they're fighting back, this is progress. It still feels better. And it is, like I said, let's go back again to, to the stat here of since July 4th, where the Rockies have, have gotten younger and younger. You know, there's still, those numbers still have, uh, you know, some influence from some of the, some of the veterans that they traded away on this team, but it's still a good sample size to take from. Again, Thomas Harding, Rockies want to finish strong after another close uh, loss. Since July 4th, the increasingly youthful Rockies are 11 and 16. An improvement over the pace that has left them with a 45 and 69 record in this stretch of competitive ball, 12 of the 16 losses and seven of the 11 victories have been by three or fewer runs. Over the season, the Rockies are 18 and 14 in one run ball games. The Rockies are playing good ball in crucial and in, in, in close situations. And it's highlighted by the fact that there are strengths and good parts of this team to build on as you continue to look towards the future. Now, is it enough to see to have confidence right away for a big quick turnaround and something wild to happen in 2024? Mm, I think we need to hesitate about that and uh, continue to, to, to keep in mind the Rockies still have a lot of shortcomings and a lot of things that they especially need to improve on as these players continue to develop. And that is as much of the issues with starting pitching we know, 
We cannot shy away from the fact that this team on offense is not where it needs to be. But they're playing close games, they're staying in games, and the young guys are being crucial in those wins and losses. I mean, they're, they're playing a factor, they're playing a role, and that is important as we continue to navigate through uh, the 2023 season. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Rockies to watch, get a little injury update for Chris Bryant and Charlie Blackman as well coming up here in segments two and three of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, got to tell you about game time. Game time, oops, that was the, uh, that's game time. That's the game time uh, little banner there. Game time was the app I used to get into the All-Star game this year and was able to get a great last second deal on a ticket for me. And uh, if you were dragging your feet on the big event, the concert, whatever you were trying to see and your friends are telling you, hey, we got to go, it's time to go. You don't miss out on this. Game Time's got you covered. They got images of your seat, so you before you buy, you know exactly where what to expect when you arrive, and your tickets are going to be with you in a matter of seconds. You don't have to go through a bunch of loops and a bunch of hoops. Tap two taps, and you're set. They even got the Game Time guarantee, which means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. If you're an everydayer out there, thank you for tuning into the Locked On Rockies podcast, being a part of the show and uh, talking rocks with me here on the Locked On Rockies podcast. Uh, Rockies head to LA for a four game set against the Dodgers. And Rocks Piles got four or three Rockies that we should be looking at here and keeping our eye on. And this is uh, from Thomas Murray over here on Rocks Pile. And uh, well, speaking of kind of going on the young thing, it was interesting to see. Uh, I saw some Dodgers uh, PR, I believe. I can't remember who it was or I can't remember if, if it was the regional uh, broadcasting network kind of setting the stage for the game. But on the Rockies to watch, the three, they listed uh, three Dodgers, three Rockies, some stats and everything on there. But the Rockies to watch, at least according to them, Nolan Jones, Ezekiel Tovar, and Brenton Doyle, I believe, was uh, was the three. So three new fit young faces of the Rockies. This is still a team with Ryan McMahon. This is a team that we'll see with Brendan Rodgers. I, I think the team is going to continue to be increasingly uh, diligent with him and uh, what was it, calf straining or, or hamstring tightness. Uh, some sort of a tightness that he, they were dealing with. Uh, they're uh, just a sore something thing. So they kept him out of a game as a precaution, kept him out of the finale again. We'll see if uh, Rodgers is back in the lineup. I don't know if I've seen a lineup yet for tonight's ball game. I'm doing a, um, a quick search here to see if anything has been uh, tweeted out to see if uh, Rodgers is back in the lineup i'm not seeing one yet so we'll 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 see what the uh lineup announcements are like later but uh I, it's just interesting again it's 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 these guys are doing enough to make to make it interesting these guys are doing enough to raise eyebrows and these guys are doing enough to show you who they are and what they're capable of doing and uh a, a good look at who you're gonna hopefully be watching for a bit with the Rockies here, but uh, I want to go back here. Rocks pile three Rockies who will have a great series against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Thomas Murray here is on rockspile.com. Starts with Austin Gomber, and he writes, Austin Gomber might be having a career resurrection in 2023. The left-handed pitcher from Winter Garden, Florida, has been dominant over the last two months. Since June 14th, Gomber has pitched with a 3.19 ERA. In his last start, he helped the Rockies win a road series against the Cardinals for the first time since 2009. In that game, Gomber went and put up six shutout innings in a 1-0 victory. Gomber leads the Rockies in wins and strikeouts, and he is, uh, as uh, Thomas is saying, he's trying to become hone in on becoming the future ace of the staff. A massive development like we were going in the, in the, begin, in the, in the first uh, segment where we were talking about as we continue to kind of use this part of the year to look ahead and look in the future as, uh, as we got to this point in the season. 
The Austin Gomber development this year has been wonderful. And if this continues, Austin Gomber adds, a, it, it goes from question mark to plus in the rotation, especially in moments and especially when hopefully next year the Rockies don't have to lean so much on Austin Gomber. But look at him taking on this challenge of being the ace, the ace whatever you want to say. Maybe it's not the right word. But for the Rockies this year, Austin Gomber has been the ace. Austin Gomber has been the pitcher that has put the Rockies in the best positions to win throughout most of the season. Yes, the beginning was tough, but for more than more of the season than not, Austin Gomber has been incredibly reliable and put the Rockies in great positions. And and is someone that I think is really benefiting from the the challenges that he's facing. I don't think you're seeing an Austin Gomber nervous, worried in his head as much as we've seen in the past. You, the aggression and the emotion that we've been talking about through uh, over the last couple of times we talked about Gomber just continue to grow, and this guy is really seeming to hit his strides right now, being a part of this club that's building itself up. Just like you kind of hope when when you're sitting there and you're kind of scratching your head and you go through a couple of seasons. I don't know if you, it's not the same type of comparison, but there have been Rockies pitches in the past where you're frustrated with a couple of years, you're frustrated with how it's going, and then they show the signs that they can't uh, of, of growth and, and their abilities and what they're truly capable of. And that's what we're seeing this year from Austin Gomber. And uh, let's see why uh, anything else here Thomas has on Gomber. With being the hottest pitcher in the Rockies pitching staff over the last two months, the team is hopeful he will start to become the guy is starting to become the guy who we all saw in the Cardinals in 2018. Gomber's never pitched against the Dodgers. Interesting. What? I can't believe there's no way Austin Gomber has uh Wow, that is a weird I that is that is very strange. He's been he's been playing with the Rockies for two years at least now. Three seasons never against the Dodgers. That's now that's a really interesting wrinkle. That adds a whole extra a layer of intrigue here into into this matchup tonight here for Austin Gomber. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I believe Austin Gomber is pitching on Friday. Uh, but but wow, that makes Austin Gomber's start in this series uh, a much more interesting. Uh, so that's always you know that's why you got to read uh, the great people that's uh, at Rock's Pile and all of our media friends because you learn something new. Up next here from uh, Thomas's uh, Thomas Murray's three Rockies who will have a great series against the Los Angeles Dodgers, Nolan Jones. If you don't know the name yet, remember it now. Young outfielder Nolan Jones has been phenomenal since being brought up in late May. Over the last 15 games, Jones has been a run-scoring machine for the Rockies with a total of three home runs, nine RBI, 15 hits, and a 288 batting average. Had those back, the, that two home run game there as well. Jones is looking for redemption this weekend after immensely struggling against the Dodgers at home in June. During that series, he only recorded one hit and drew three walks. While Rockies hitters typically thrive at home and struggle on the road, it has been a polar opposite for Jones. This year is hitting 295 with six home runs, 17 RBI, eight doubles, 13 walks, and an OPS of 918 on road games. So that's an interesting flip as well as um, the adjustment there. You got to believe the guys are going to hit at Coors Field. Maybe, I guess, with the exception of that other outfielder, Chris Bryant, uh, instead of the road. But road performance and going out into Dodger Stadium and continuing your hot stretch of offensive baseball against a good team, against a, a, a Dodgers team that's also playing great baseball at the moment, would be another thing to raise your eyebrows and continue to look and say, that Nolan Jones guy has something special. And especially because... It's exciting more and more to get you know, good offense is something we need to be celebrating and getting more excited by, especially slugging, RBI generation, extra base hits, home runs. That stuff matters a ton, especially when it comes to evaluating uh, Nolan Jones. So I'm hoping he keeps his hot stretch alive as well and hope that uh, that uh, road that road offense continues for him. And uh, finally... Here from Thomas Murray's three Rockies, it's Ezekiel Tovar. I think Ezekiel Tovar has to be on your list of Rockies to watch at any point of the season. I think this guy is developing. It's still too early in the offense. I'd still like to see a little bit more of when it comes to power and pop. 
But man, oh man, there's just there's just no shortage of things to uh, of to be encouraged and excited and uh, and pleased by when it comes to Ezekiel Tovar as he's navigated this season. Tough start on offense, build it up his offense, really impressive with the defense, handling the challenges of the season, developing into a young, strong leader on this team and someone that can be a, and that's a big benefit. I think when you have young guys that can that can carry weight in the locker room and carry a presence in the locker room like Tovar can command, Julio Rodriguez is another good example, I think, of that. Uh, the Padres probably have a couple examples of people that they they turn to there. These this is a strength. Ezekiel Tovar continues to be a strength for the Rockies, and I want to see uh, what Thomas is watching here uh, for Tovar this weekend. I always love seeing a comeback story, and for Ezekiel Tovar, I think this weekend is meant to be just that. As I mentioned earlier, Tovar had a costly error yesterday afternoon against the Brewers, and looked to redeem himself this weekend at the Dodgers. In his career, Tovar has played in two series against the Dodgers, but has been impressive so far. Right now, he has a career slash line of 333, 375, 400, three RBI, four hits, and four runs scored by himself against the Dodgers. Over the last 15 games, things could be a little bit better for Tovar. Currently owns a batting average of 254 and 18 strikeouts. However, he's managed to hit two home runs and five RBIs during this span with two stolen bases. Based off his recent success, Thomas uh, thinks he can start to expect Tovar to have a bounce back weekend. Get hot against the Dodgers. Would love to see that. And another thing that would add to the legacy and greatness of, uh, of, my, of an excitement of Ezekiel Tovar dominating the Dodgers we need a Dodger killer man the Dodgers have had so many I mean all of the NL West have had guys that just come in and feast on the Rockies and just and, and just benefit we need the Rockies to have someone that does the same since they lost Nolan Arenado Nolan Arenado used to torment the NL West but that's what the Rockies need they need an NL West killer like a guy that just takes on the challenge and so here's to hoping that Tobar gets back on track there uh, in terms of offense with the uh with the, uh, the the Dodgers coming up and continues to, to set a legacy of taking on the dreaded Dodgers. All right, uh, let's get some news on Chris Bryant and Charlie Blackman and see what their status is here uh, and uh, see what they uh, what's going on for them. We will do that and more coming up in segment number three. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast, free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. You can find us anywhere you find podcasts. You can find us on YouTube, be part of the show, dropping your Rockies hot takes in the comments. You can also find us on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app. Just search Locked On Rockies or Colorado Rockies and you'll be taken to where you need to go. All right, big names that people uh, were talking about the future Rockies, uh, but what about some of the big names for the Rockies that continue to be on the injured list here? An update from uh, Sam Conan here from uh, Fan Nation Sports Illustrated here. Uh, outfielders Charlie Blackman and Chris Bryant have been out since June 10th and tw- July 22nd, respectively. Watching from the dugout as Colorado dropped to a National League worst 44 and 69. I, I, that, this, I think it's, it's isn't it? 45 and 69, I think. I can't remember. Anyway, they say 44 and 68, whatever it is. Uh, Blackman would start to set a rehab assignment with AAA Albuquerque on August 1st, but a setback prevented him from playing for the Isotopes. The 37-year-old veteran was able to go through full pregame activities on Monday and Tuesday. And uh, he says uh, the for Blackman, they're meeting with uh, the training staff to discuss the next steps. And uh, Chris Bryant here, the 31-year-old slugger, had a glove on his right hand rather than his left on Monday. He told reporters that he was not sure when he would be cleared to take the splint off and that team doctors do not want him to move his finger at all. I uh, think here, here's the deal. Will we see both of them? Probably. We'll see Charlie Blackman again. Charlie Blackman will play again this year. At this point, at this stage, where you're at, all the health issues, everything else you've dealt with with Chris Bryant, his foot, back, knee, finger, this, that, shut him down. Get fully healthy, KB. Do whatever you get completely healthy. Fractures fully healed, fully stretched, fully everything. Because 
There's no reason. Uh, there's no reason to insert Chris Bryant in the lineup and take playing time away from Nolan Jones, Brenton Doyle, Michael Tolia. At this point in this season, there, there, there is no reason, especially as Chris Bryant continues to get hurt. People are still coming to Coors Field. Uh, there, it, at this point, Chris Bryant has to reevaluate everything to to get his body right. The guy needs to play more than a month for the Rockies. The guy needs to get consistent. And if you're not, then I want the young guys playing. If if you're not, if if he can't move his finger on August 8th or 9th, shut him down. Shut him down. Shut it down. He's been hurt multiple times this year. He was hurt multiple times last year. The injury history is there. This season is a wash. This season is a miss. Chris Bryant signed a deal forever. He's going to be on the team for another five years. Shut him down. Get him healthy. Then there's Getting more Chris Bryant at bats this year doesn't really help the Rockies. It, it really doesn't. Because because it's 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 not young guys needing major league experience. The guys a World Series, the guys an MVP and a World Series champion. Gar, you know, extra at bats in August and September aren't going to help fully turn things around for Chris Bryant. He needs to go through a complete overhaul. I think of basically everything. Everything is down for him. He's trending downward. Health down. Offense down. Defensive ability down. Everything is decreasing for Chris Bryant. Take this time to build up and be able to be a contributing veteran on a young team like a certain Canadian in Cincinnati and do that. Chris Bryant should be on the phone with Joey Votto immediately. Chris Bryant should be talking to Joey Votto about how he navigated this a difficult point with his with injuries and t- poor team performance and the team getting younger and all of those and, and and xyz because that's the role we need chris bryant to play and it's gonna happen sooner rather than later as for charlie blackman we need to see him on the field because we don't know how much longer we're gonna see him on the field at least in a rockies uniform I still don't think Chuck goes anywhere and, you know, but the clock is ticking for, for Charlie Blackman and the time is now to, for Chris Bryant to take the steps to get back to being the best version that he can be again, because he has not been anywhere close to that since joining the Colorado Rockies. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today. Uh, You can find us free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. We are on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app. And uh, if you want to help the show, best way to help the show, subscribe to the show on YouTube and uh, join the show there. Drop your YouTube comments there. Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me what you're thinking about the Rockies and uh, all that good stuff. You can find us on your favorite streaming services. And for your second listen of the day, Go check out the Locked On Broncos, the Locked On Avalanche, the Locked On Nuggets, and the Locked On Buffs podcast for more Colorado sports coverage here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Until next time, I'm Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast. You are Locked On Rockies. 